Like, I'm enjoying falling on my ass, okay? She's cute. I don't mind uh, seeing a little bit of her underwear there. Left, right, shoot. Left, right, shoot. Shit. <laughs> yeah, well, we did something! Oh, we fell on our ass. So subscribers of mine will know that uh, over the last three years I've been doing my best to highlight the numerous uh, NTSC American uh, Amiga games that have been released over the years in a sea of, uh, you know, European love that oftentimes they're just not aware and, uh, and sadly sometimes they are aware and they just don't give a shit. You know, despite the fact that they themselves love a great many American games, I counted a good 32 of the top 100 Lemon Amiga games were NTSC. That's my uh, conservative estimate, by the way. And of course, I could personally name you quite a bit more that I feel deserve to be uh, you know, on any uh, Amiga 100 list. I have been noting NTSC Origins since my very first review three years ago. I'm here to uh, point out a truth, a truth that, quite sadly, I feel there are some Europeans that, uh, that you know, they don't want to hear that truth, and I'm just saying that we love the Amiga too, and you love some of these games too. Uh, it's important to uh, understand, to look at this stuff, and with this game here, I see it as a perfect example to uh, highlight the differences between NTSC and Palmo. This is an American game by Epix, made in America. It's action-oriented, so we can uh, look at a comparison here. Now, both of these were started at the exact same time. On the upper left is NTSC, as it was designed. Bottom right is PAL mode. Pay attention to those clocks. You're going to notice a, a sizable uh, speed difference as time goes on, but you're also going to notice a graphical difference. Now, PAL mode on the bottom right there is uh, in 4.3, technically. It's, uh, PAL mode is 320 by 256, which is, you know, displayed completely on a 4.3 monitor back in the day, but you'll notice lots of blackness on the bottom. This is because NTSC games were 320 by 200. There's 56 extra pixels in PAL mode, but they're not being used, so it's just blackness. And in America, this NTSC 320 by 200 was stretched into 4.3 to fit the monitors. This is what the artist saw, this is what the artist intended you to see, but when you play these NTSC games in PAL mode, it uh, stretches them horizontally into a widescreen type of format, much like your modern widescreen displays, but that is not how they were intended to be seen. Now, despite starting both at the exact same time, NTSC mode has already finished a good lap ahead of the PAL mode, which is going to finish here. I believe that's, uh, I counted 12 seconds of real time between the two, but uh, PAL mode finished one second uh, behind in uh, actual game time, so uh, I, I, it's 11 seconds, but I'm going to say 10 seconds every minute, which would be one minute every six minutes, and every Every hour, that is 10 minutes you're wasting if you play an NTSC game in PAL mode. So I already had a go at this the other day, and uh, I, I completed just two games. You know, I just played through a couple of the games, and I knew immediately that I was going to have no problem uh, mastering this game, or at least not embarrassing myself like so many other people seem to do when they played this game. You know, I think that speaks a lot for the quality of the game. Um, there are plenty of much harder games I played, like a Silpede or Ghostbusters 2, uh, Marble Madness. Um, these are games that are going to take you a lot of time to master. I played this one just a little bit, and I knew you know, it's not going to be a problem. I really believe that when a lot of people look at this game, they're just looking for an easy target uh, to make fun of. Uh, the game has difficult controls, but they are designed that way on purpose. Not to, it's not it's not poorly designed. It's, I wanted at least a little bit of a look at uh, how I start off the games before I you know somewhat master them, um, so you can you know see me struggling a little bit. As I said, I've already played two of them and I've gotten somewhat good at them. So. Let's look at the other ones and see if they cause me much difficulty, and then we're going to come back and uh, you're going to see me uh, do.
do good at them. There's no player two. What? I don't. There's no player two. Let's look at the hot dog event. This is the first one on the. So let's start the hot dog event. Uh, if I remember, so we can. wasn't too hard there. Uh, so yeah, we press fire and then, okay, we did a little flip there. Got me a higher score. Uh, most people, obviously, they don't look at the, they don't mess with the controls at all when they play. So they do that and they fuck it up and then they, they fall face first like they do in so many reviews. They're great at falling face first on their ass. Let's go to the biathlon. The music in this game is awkward. It's like it's it's not bad. Some of it's good. Some of it is good, but it's awkward sounding. I don't know. So here's another one that uh, is very difficult at first. So how do we start it? Again, we're just, how do we start? I don't know. This is, you gotta, the controls are always different, so each part of it is different. So we gotta press, we gotta go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. That puts you up the hill. But then we come to this down one, and it, the left, right doesn't work anymore. So you actually gotta go, it, it's simulating, actually, uh, skiing like this. It's, it's, uh, it's trying. It's doing the best it can, and, ah, uh, uh, and, uh, I guess if we don't have, there we go. Uh, uh, you know, it tries. And we gotta, uh, shoot these things. So we, it's empty. The barrel's empty. We gotta open it. We gotta load it. And then we shoot. Open, load. Shoot, open, load, shoot, open, load, shoot, and then down, 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 open, load, shoot. Down. Go left, go left, go left, go left. Down. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Down. Down. Left, right, left, right. Open. Shoot. Open. Shoot. Open. Shoot. Open. Shoot. Open. Shoot. Down. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Down. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Come on, come on, come on. Down. Down. Left, right. Shoot. Left, right. Shoot. Shit. And then you start this again. There's a knack to it, and eventually you, uh, eventually you get better at it. And I'm, I'm serious when I say doing that, just doing that, I, uh, you know, I feel a little bit of a sweat coming on it. Like, it simulates, it stimulates muscles that you don't normally use when you are playing the game, obviously. It's, um, this game is, I swear to God, it's always fun. So those are the two that I uh, have already practiced a little bit. Let's try the next event. Press your button. So how's this one gonna do? I imagine it's gonna be different, but... So yes, um, it's gonna be different, so... No, it's not, it's not the same as it was. Is it up and down? There we go. So this one, we're like pressing down and going left and right. So it's something, and it's not as fast. This one's more smooth. 
the way this one's going, it's got to be a little more smooth in this one. So it's different. Uh, different than the last one, but now that I've done that one, I bet I can come back. Let's play it again. Let's see if I do any better if I play it again now. Again, that was the first time I played it. First time I played it and I was able to figure it out. So let's play it again. Let's see if I do better this time. Yes, and look at that. I'm already catching up to the computer. <laughs> and I'm gonna... Look, I've already figured it out, guys. I've already uh, I figured this one out. Now, is, am I going to beat some world record? I doubt it. I, but uh, I'm obviously going to beat a lot of the people that make fun of this game. I've The second time. Literally the second time I have ever played this event on this game. Um, second time. I've already won. I fiddled around with it a little bit for the first time. I figured it out on the very first time. The second time, I won. Um, is that saying something about the people that normally review these games? I think it does. Now for the figure skating. Uh, this one, I... From what I've seen of the figure skating, this one, I, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to figure this one out. This, might, this one might be the hardest to figure out. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. I always see people and they just fall on their ass, so... I, so I can skate there. Can I jump? <laughs> I can fall on my ass. Can we do anything? Oh, we did something! Oh, we fell on our ass. <laughs> so, uh, I think we got to Let's gain some speed, and then do it? No. So if we go up and down, up and down, no. Um, no. No. There's gotta, be, there's gotta be a trick to it though, there's always a trick. I'm telling you, there's always a fucking trick to this shit. fire button. We tap the fire button once that goes backwards. Now we do it again. No? No. Go backwards. No. That goes backwards. Do it again. Hold it. something. We did something. <laughs> we fell on our ass again. We did something. <laughs> Got no score. <laughs> we did something. Let's try it again. <laughs> so. <laughs> Go backwards. Okay. Hold it. Okay. okay. It's just, it's I'm starting to understand something though. Holding it. We can do that and then we can stop. How do we not fall on our ass, though? That's the question. <laughs> not like that. Not like that. And then we stop. Ha! Okay, so then you, you tap it once again so you don't fall on your ass. <laughs> I'm telling you, even when you, 
when you don't understand it, it's still fun. It's fun. It's not a bad game. <laughs> By no means. Like, I'm enjoying falling on my ass, okay? She's cute. I don't mind uh, seeing a little bit of her underwear there. <laughs> and I got a score! I got a score! 0 0.4. Yes. Try right, one more time. Alright, so we're skating. We're going to tap to go backwards. No. That's not what we want to do, okay? So, tap to go backwards. Hold it. Tap again. Hold it. Go left. No. Right. No. Goes backwards. How do we do a big one? Go up. We do that. So we just gotta tap it so we don't fall on our ass there. I gotta. I, I'm not understanding how to jump. Though. But uh, we're getting somewhere. I think I can. I think I'm gonna be able to figure it out uh, when I come back to you guys, though. <laughs> we get a score that time. We did get a score, a better score. And just like that, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning, and I'm having fun. It's not frustrating. Controls in this game are not frustrating. They are designed to be different. They're, it's designed to simulate sporting events. Uh, so, uh, no. I'm okay with this game. Now let's try the next one. So, uh, figure, we did speed skating. We did figure skating, ski jump. Zoomed out kind of view. Pressing fire does that. Ah! <laughs> All right, let's try. <laughs> let's do it again. button and then it'll launch it and we can uh, change our ways here. That one landed so just a second third attempt or whatever I landed. Eight style points. 172 uh, total points so I'm sure we can do a little more uh, maneuvering. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. Oh, oh shit. <sighs> like you gotta, you gotta make your little uh, style things and then remember, you gotta come back. Okay, come back, come back, come back, come back. And we land. Do we get any style points? There? Six style points. So we got we got better last time. Come on, let's do it again. One more time. And we land it. Did that give us any points? Ten style points. Yeah. And already. You know, that's not embarrassing. I'm not, I have not embarrassed myself whatsoever. I've done something. I learned how to play the game. It's fun. I'm still having fun. Now for the freestyle skating, which comes up looking a lot like the last one. I'm not sure. What's the difference between this one? I don't know. Got different music. She's going faster, I think. Jump! I've done it before. Come 
Come on, jump! Jump! <laughs> I got some points, though. <laughs> Again, I'll come back to you, and hopefully I'll figure it out uh, by then. Got one more event. The bobsledding! To me, go, we go to bobsled team. So we got a track here. There's the bobsled. So okay, so uh, okay, that sucked. Okay, that sucked. Do we have to press it? No, oh, go back, you son of a bitch. We stay, and then we no. Maybe we gotta press left when we do it? No. I bet you it's opposite. Like that. Yes, it's the opposite. So this one's the opposite. So you see it go left, go right instead. You see it go right, go left. That is uh what this one's gonna be about. Next. Shit! <laughs> Try it again. Because first we're gonna go right, it's that. And then we go left, alright. Right, uh, left, right, uh, gonna be left, right, right, done. Done. It's like that. So, what's that, the fourth time? I failed, and then after that, I figured it out. It's just, they're messing with the controls. That's what this game is all about. That's what all of these epic sports games have always been about. And a lot of people love these games. They sold, like, they made a million of them. Obviously, obviously, there was something, they did something right. They did something right with these games. Uh, and I think Winter Games is probably the most uh, popular of them all. Perhaps California games? Uh, I'm not sure. Summer games? I don't know. Uh, this is the one I was always the most aware of, though. Look, yeah, I don't know. Can we go faster than that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm alright with that. And just like that, we have now uh, completed all the games. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to play them a little more, I'm going to master them, hopefully, and then we're going to compete in all of them and see how we do. So far, I like the game. Voice over shot is back now, and I'd just like to uh, finish up my thought there earlier on the NTSC stuff. This stuff is, it's truly important. You have to care. I've been here, and I've been pointing it out. Uh, in every single NTSC game, I point it out, I don't always, you know, hark on it very much, but I always will mention a fact. You know, this is the fact. This is an American game was made in America. Please play it in NTSC mode. Go into your emulator settings, switch it into NTSC mode. If you have a real PAL computer, many of them can switch into NTSC mode. Switch them into NTSC mode. It is important. It's not just your time that is being wasted, it is the art. The art is so incredibly important. Maybe you don't think so for a game like this because it's so zoomed out. We're not exactly dealing with the uh, Mona Lisa's uh, that Jim Sachs would make for Defender of the Crown. Very zoomed in uh, quality art look uh, of their faces. We're not exactly dealing with that here. I don't care. Speaking as somebody who has had the honor, the number one honor probably, maybe of my entire life, Jim Sachs himself thanks me for displaying Defender of the Crown in NTSC mode when nobody else online does it. 99% of the videos of Defender of the Crown show it in PAL mode. And it's, it's a thing that really, truly saddens him. And there are people that will say, well, if they really wanted it to be seen right, they would have just uh, cared about PAL mode. And you know, this is insanity from so-called Amiga lovers. How can you claim you love the Amiga when you are just destroying these people who made the artwork, who coded these games? And you're, you're blaming them when you, as the end user, have the power. It's the, it's the past is the past. It's over. 
play it right now. You need to play it right now. You need to care about this. This is artwork. If you care about video games, you claim you care about this stuff. If you care, you will show it right. And it needs to be said. It has to be said because there are... I've somehow managed to convince a couple people that, uh, you know, they need to show this stuff correctly. Now, no disrespect intended to them, but they're too damn nice about it. And I've already been down that route. People don't care when uh, you're nice. You know, just doing it yourself and not saying anything. You need to say it. And every single time, every chance you get, you need to say this is an NTSC game. Please play it right. You've got to drill it into these people's heads. I truly love the Amiga, and I just want this stuff seen as it was meant to be seen. Please consider that. Please care about that. Now for Epic's Winter Games. Uh, originally released in 1985 for the Commodore 64, many, one of many uh, of the games series. There's a, you know, California games, uh, I think there's a couple of those. There's a World Games, Summer Games, or something like that. There's a few of them. Uh, this is Winter Games, and I believe it is their top selling ever of the games series. Let's take a look at the manual for hot dog aerials. I don't believe that's the uh, proper Olympic term there. This demonstration sport tests your guts, grace, and precision on skis. Strive for a performance of athletic artistry as you flip through the air in a dazzling series of daredevil moves. This one here is from the back of the box. Winter Games, the quest for the gold continues. You've captured the gold in Summer Games and Summer Games 2. Now it's on to the Winter Games. And what an incredible setting, a completely realistic Winter Wonderland featuring six action-packed events you can compete against your friends or the computer. First, choose the country you want to represent. Then it's practice training and learning a winning strategy for each event. Now, the opening ceremony and the competition begins. Will you be the one who takes the gold of the award ceremony? The quest for the gold continues, and it's all here. The strategy, the challenge, the competition, the art, and the pageantry of Winter Games. Biathlon, race over a cross-country track on skis with a 22 caliber rifle slung over your shoulders. You have only a few cartridges to fire to require targets, so steady your sights and develop an eagle eye before you fire away. The biathlon here is actually my favorite of all the events because I believe it actually takes you know, a certain amount of gaming skill to uh, get better at this one, whereas all the other ones, well, there's a knack to it. There's something specific that you need to do for each and every one of those, and if you understand what you need to do, uh, you can get it nearly perfect every single time for all the other events. This one here, like, it's all about, you know, your reflexes, uh, some skill, stamina even. Uh, it, it requires actual gaming talent, I believe. I mean, the other ones do too, because you have to actually, you know, figure them out. It's sort of a puzzle. Uh, again, the manual states clearly the controls, what you need to do for all of these. Again, nobody reads the manual, and I didn't need to read the manual except for um, the, the skating. That's the only thing I actually required the manual for. I didn't read it for anything else. But the manual is there for the people who uh, complain about terrible controls. This game does not have terrible controls. Every little bit of the controls are designed that way on purpose. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is the staple of the Epic Games. You know how many of these they made? You, you don't think they heard that criticism? a couple times that maybe the controls are a little bad. Did they care? No, they didn't because that is the soul of the game. That is how you need to play this game. Now, you will need a good joystick. Yes, you will need uh, a micro-switched uh, joystick to play this game uh, good. <laughs> if you have your Atari joystick, uh, you're going to suck. You're going to break it. This, the, the Epic's games were known. <laughs> they had a reputation for utterly destroying the uh, original Atari 2600 joysticks. I have the Wico Ergo Stick, the same joystick I've had <laughs> forever since I was a kid. A fantastic joystick. Any micro switch joystick will do you quite well uh, for this particular game. Uh, no doubts about it though, I will go head to head against anybody who claims this game has terrible controls. Uh, you don't know what this game was meant for. You don't know how it was designed. You don't understand the history of this game if you dare say that. Now, it's a simple game. I mean, there's not much to it, but it's meant to be, you know, consumed, you know, given an hour of your time or something. Uh, it's meant to suck you in because it has a hook. All of these uh, games in the games, Epic's game series has a hook. 
And here is the Winter Games, and uh, you know it's meant to be simple. It's meant to occupy a certain amount of your time, but it's not meant to be super duper easy. But you can figure them out. Um, it's it's not a game you will need to uh, you know, devote weeks to in order to figure out. I'm telling you, the second time playing most of these events, I was able to get, get the knack of it. And, you know, if you want to master it, you need a little more time after that, but not much. Not much time is required if you want to master this. In fact, I will have beaten a world record! Uh, well, I don't know. At least in terms of uh, the scores on this disc. I have beaten a world record, and this is why I like this particular game so much, is because you can get better. Every time I play this, I get better and better, I believe, uh, later on for the picture review. I even got better than... Uh, my 59 uh, seconds in this one. I believe I got a 58 or 57 in uh, when I took the pictures. Now, searching for relevant gems to share with you in terms of history, I found a Compute Gazette, December of uh, 1987. It's an American magazine for three dollars. Mostly covers the Commodore 64. I think a little bit of Amiga sprinkled out throughout there, including this advertisement right here for the brand new Commodore Amiga 500. It talks, it animates, it educates, it's a home office, it's a video studio, it's arcade games in stereo, it's the new Commodore Amiga 500 computer. Only Amiga makes it possible. Please refrain from breaking out into song here. We're here for the uh, best sellers, the Commodore games that live on and on. From Keith Farrell, Features Editor. Some games take on a life of their... <gasps> on... Ugh. Features editor. Features editor. Uh, 31 years later, I will uh, correct your mistake there. Some games take on a life of their own, outperforming even their creators' high expectations. What makes a bestseller? Gazette talked to several leading software publishers and found out which games were their Commodore bestsellers and why. We all have our favorite software games and entertainment packages, and sometimes our views are shared by tens of thousands of others creating a bestseller. We asked the major publishers of Commodore Entertainment Software what made their popular games special. Their answers were informative and surprising. Here are the top three best-selling Commodore games from 13 of the leading software publishers. Goes through a couple of software publishers there before coming to this page with Electronic Arts and then Epics. Number one, their top selling game is Winter Games. Winter Games is one of the most popular of Epics game series, according to uh, Noreen Lavoy, manager of the company's public relations. As in all Epics products, Lavoy continues, uh, the emphasis on graphics and playability finds a ready market among Commodore owners. Another factor in its success, she adds, is a Winter Games offering of several different events within one package. I'll go on to Summer Games 2 here. Having reached the market in May 1985, shortly before the actual Summer Games were held in Los Angeles, Summer Games 2 is a strong second place bestseller for epics. Again, graphics, ease of play, and variety of activity have helped make Summer Games an entertainment package for all seasons. As a speed skating comes to an end, speed skaters can move at 30 miles per hour much faster than an athletic track runners. In fact, speed skating champions are the fastest self-propelled human beings over level Earth. Now, of course, Compute Gazette there was uh, focusing on the Commodore 64 market. Well, this is the uh, Amiga version, but uh, keep in mind that by 1989, uh, Winter Games had sold over 250,000 uh, units, and that's an incredible incredible amount for a computer game back in the day to have sold and that includes every single platform it was released on and it was that was a many uh, many different uh, computers and even consoles although I've read they were very late to the uh, console market which might uh, be a factor in uh, their uh, ultimate demise by 1989 they went bankrupt I think they still uh, I think there's a couple things released after that uh, but uh, they went bankrupt in 1989 a historical company for the Commodore 64 especially uh, you know, they made so many things the epics fast load cartridge they I had a joystick on the Amiga made by epics it's not as good as uh, the Wicco one I have now but it, I believe it was a micro switch but it just didn't didn't feel as good as the uh, Wicco one they were once labeled as the uh, 16th uh, biggest micro uh, 
software company. But I do think they were very, very focused on the Commodore 64 market, and uh, I think that ultimately led to their demise when the Commodore 64 became less popular in the late 80s. Now, of course, here's an example of they definitely made a few games uh, for the Amiga. They did branch out a little bit there, um, but... Uh, Again, it's essentially it is the Commodore 64 game, but it, it does definitely have improved graphics. Uh, the music is odd. I, I said it earlier. It's, it, it seems uh, awkward to me. I, I'm wondering if this is one of the very rare games to uh, utilize the Amiga's built-in uh, FM synthesizer. Uh, that's not something that was normally used. Obviously, they mostly use samples for the Amiga, but the Amiga did have built-in uh, FM. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, this is one of the games that used that. Not exactly sure how I would uh, find that out, but yes, this is a different. It's different enough. Uh, a lot of the stages have been slightly altered in their overall look, and they've added smooth scrolling into the game. So you can't exactly say they were lazy with uh, this port to the Amiga. Uh, it, it is a competent port of this game, but uh, Epic's never really branched out into. Uh, deeper games. I think that was their problem. Their problem wasn't uh, porting, you know, the game series to the Amiga or anything. It was they never made anything uh, deeper than these very simple games. Uh, I think, I personally, their most iconic game uh, to me is uh, uh, Jumpman and Jumpman Jr. You uh, heard the uh, Jumpman theme uh, at Stygian. I chose uh, Stygian's home country is the Epics country, which is the uh, has the theme for Jumpman. It's a great Commodore 64 game. Uh, too bad they didn't uh, uh, port that over to the Amiga. Well, they made a boatload of very famous titles for the Commodore. 64. The only uh, complaint I have about uh, the Amiga conversion here is that it probably should have came out in 1985, you know, when the Amiga 1000 was released. Uh, they shouldn't have waited till 1987 there. Uh, it's, uh, very, this would have been a game that definitely took advantage of the Amiga on launch. Uh, and it, it's, don't get me wrong, I still, I think it's a very graphically appealing game for 1987, but the problem, well, the problem is, uh, you know, I was showing you a uh, Compute Gazette, I had to, uh, resort to Commodore 64 magazines to actually find a review, <laughs> or look, a deep look, a historical look at this game, because, uh, well, Amiga World didn't give a crap about this game. I remember back in the day... Uh, my dad had a whole collection of different magazines, and I definitely remember uh, looking through one of those magazines once, and they had uh, like pages upon pages. They like they did a feature on Epics for the Amiga, and you know they went through Winter Games and they went through Summer Games and stuff. And uh, Winter Games was definitely the one that most intrigued me, but and it looked fantastic uh, in the magazine. Looking at these games at the time, it looked fantastic. I, I don't remember what that magazine was called though. I couldn't find it. But, you know, Amiga World didn't care. They did not review this game. Uh, I, I, you know, you look online, and I, I, I was very hard-pressed to find a review uh, for this game. I think it's not that they didn't like it. It's just, it's been, it's an old game for the Commodore 64. I, I, I think they looked at it as beneath them or something. Ultimately, I had to resort for a Commodore 64 review uh, from a European magazine, uh, Zap. From November of 1985, Epics have moved away from the hot, sweaty, and dizzy heights of summer games to those of a far colder but equally sweaty chime of winter games, their third sports simulation to be released in Britain. The amount of people that have asked for information about winter games, well, it's arrived, and I'm glad to say that for me it offered no disappointment whatsoever. Some of the bitmapped backdrops uh, are absolutely superb, especially the ones on the Biathlon. The sprites, animation, and sound are... Uh, that word is obscured. Uh, the usual, uh, epics, uh, standard excellence in some of the animation, although not as smooth, uh, has more variety than Summer Games 2. This program only has seven events, but each event requires massive memory. The Biathlon, for example, with its, uh, four bitmap screens. My, uh, personal favorites include the Bob, uh, Sled. Yeah, Bob Sled is actually my least favorite, because it's the easiest. Uh, well, both the, uh, skating events, these both require a hell of a lot of practice before anything like a professional score is achieved. Uh, I think that Winter Games is a little harder than the others in the game series.
series. The two skating events offer a lot more challenge than just about any other event in, in Summer Games 2. Get your uh, furs on and have a go. If it doesn't grab you, then you're intangible. Now that we are on the ski jump, here it is from the manual. Every gust of wind chills your body as you look down from the top of the jump tower to the runway far below. The judges and spectators look like insects from this height. Go! Your coiled body lurches forward and suddenly you're into another world. You crouch down low in a tough position to accommodate as much speed as possible. At takeoff, you leap out, push up, and lean forward over the edge of your skis to reduce wind resistance and increase the length of your jump. Here we have a uh, free skating. Now earlier you saw figure skating. They're both pretty much the same thing. They have the both same basic moves. Uh, but with uh, figure skating, you're looking to uh, accomplish you know a specific set of moves within a time period. With free skating, you know you're pretty much you know, you, uh, you're choreographing your own your own movements here as seen from the manual. In free skating competition, you choose the jumps and spins, inventing your own choreography to music. You have two minutes to complete the um, program. Here we have the uh, scoring for the uh, free skating, again, and the moves themselves on the joystick. This is by far the most uh, uh, complicated event to memorize because, you know, those events. You need a uh, Every move has, you know, there's diagonals involved on the joystick and stuff. That's why I kept falling earlier on when you saw me live. It's because I didn't figure out, oh, it's diagonal you gotta do. This one is the only one I actually had to look up in the manual. I had to look up the uh, actual moves. Uh, yeah, look it up for yourself. I'm not gonna show you the moves. <laughs> there are some things that you gotta figure out for yourself. Now to get back to that Zap review, I believe they gave it a 94% in their magazine for the Commodore 64. I, I, I think that's important to understand. Uh, it's, it's important to understand where a game came from, what they felt about the game for the original system it was on. Because if a game is good, then a game is good, regardless of the system that it is on. Uh, I do believe it takes advantage of the early Amiga. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm very disappointed that I couldn't find uh, more uh, in regards to this game for the actual Amiga. It says, I think the magazines just passed it by. Um, I don't think they uh, care to look. Base it on its merits as a short action, uh, you know, puzzle kind of. It's, it's, it's definitely a weird combination of things. But it is a combination of things. It is meant to be a short game that you go to. Again, I think that's why Europe loved this game because you know it's a perfect game to be on a budget kind of a title. Uh, you know, you can figure it out. It's again, it's, there's a lot of enjoyment um, from coming to a game that's hard. At, at the start, you, you know, you can't figure it out. It's like, oh my god, I just keep falling. I keep falling. But uh, if you persist at it, and you don't have to persist at it that long, especially with a game like this that you can figure out the difficult controls quickly, that's incredibly rewarding. And uh, you can even get some uh, world records here as Jakku, the skating master, gets a 3.8. 4.0 is the uh, highest it can go. So, a uh, new world record there. It's important to look at this game um, for what it is. It's just a simple uh, diversion to have some fun with, and it will you will have fun. It's a very fun game. Uh, I, I told you earlier, bobsledding is my least favorite, and it is because it's very simple. I don't know, maybe there's tricks to uh, getting a little bit of a faster time, I imagine. But, I mean, it's fun. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely fun to, uh, you know, go uh, racing around the uh, bobsled track here. But it's, uh, in terms for me, it was the least, uh, I, you know, I spent my least amount of time trying to figure this one out. But it's just, it's just an overall uh, fun game. Now, uh, you know, a, a year earlier, or maybe a couple of years earlier, they had released a fairy tale adventure on the Amiga, which is an action RPG that possibly even predated Zelda on the NES. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's I think that's possible. It's a massively scoped game with good graphics and music. You have Defender of the Crown, of course. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous game. Uh, you know, maybe they were trying to... Maybe they were getting used to those you know, certain types of games, but... Uh, it's, it's, it's disappointing to me that they didn't even bother to review it. At least... I could look at these things and say, well, I could make fun of them for not giving a crap because maybe they maybe they didn't care about the game, but they, they didn't even bother. They didn't even bother to review it, uh, you know, for the most part, at least none that I could track down, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of um, today, 
I, I think this is a fantastic game for the Amiga. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, modern people, when they look at this game, modern reviewers, they don't tend to give it any respect. Even even the Commodore 64 original, which got a 94% uh, from Zap, they, they don't have any perspective, historical perspective. They have none. They just balk at the controls, which they cannot uh, figure out for the life of them. And they never stop to think, maybe it's not the game. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I just... You know, they like to, uh, well, I'm so used to this or I'm so used to that. You know, no, that's not an excuse. This game does not have uh, b t bad controls, okay? W they, when they are designed that way, I'm sorry. Part of the challenge of any video game is figuring out the controls. S some games, you want that to come naturally, definitely. But I'm sorry, it is a factor in video games. And... Even to this day, they you know, they mess around with controls sometimes. It's deliberately sometimes. This was utterly deliberate. You can't knock it when it's deliberate. It's up to you, the gamer, to figure it out. That is part of the challenge of the game. Here's a bob sledding from Emmanuel Prayer to Kareen down a track of solid ice while you crouch in a precision-built machine of steel and aluminum. You'll fly around hair racing turns and plummet down the bumpy straightaways at speeds exceeding 90 miles per hour. From Emmanuel, how did winter sports begin? Skiing, skating, and sledding began centuries ago as uh, fun and practical ways for people to move across snow and ice. Ski kneeler skis may have existed about 4,000 or 5,000 years ago in uh, Scandinavia. Ski uh, binding were invented in the uh, 1860s by Sandre Nordhem of uh, Mordego, Norway. Once skiers could slip the toes of their boots into iron pieces and then uh, fasten their heels with straps or springs, they gained much more control of their long wooded sleds, and they could move with breathtaking speed. Norwegian immigrants pioneered the sport all over the world. Skating skating began around 1000 BC before the Iron Age. Nordic people made skates from elk, ox, and reindeer boots. In fact, uh, anthropologists have discovered bone skates that they believe to be at least 20 centuries old. Since the Middle Ages, People have uh, skated on uh, canals in Holland. Ice skating was a very fashionable recreation in the French court in the uh, 1770s with uh, Marie Antoinette was an avid enthusiast. Everyone uh, congratulates Stitchy and Phoenix for uh, being number one. She won the gold. Stitchy and Phoenix, Olympic gold uh, winner. Sledding. Uh, primitive sleds were used for transportation before 3000 BC in Northern Europe. The American Indians tied poles together with a thong to carry loads over snow. The thrill of riding a speeding sled down a steep hill caught on in the 1500s in Germany when people rode toboggans over snowy hillsides. Uh, sledding became a real sport when British and American tourists started racing sleds down the snowbound mountain roads in the European Alps in the middle of the 19th century. Bobsled races developed in the 1880s in Switzerland. Uh, definitely the manual is worth a read for anybody uh, playing this game and the game itself. It is worth a play. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, uh, intriguing game on the Amiga, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, my look at the game. Now, if you enjoyed my little side-by-side -side comparison earlier on of the NTSC PAL thing, then you'll definitely want to check out uh, my uh, video on uh, Test Drive 2, another uh, NTSC game that uh, I did uh, uh, both of them side-by-side -side there, and you can uh, you can uh, see them both uh, as the cars race by, and even uh, actual comparisons of the actual uh, Ferrari, and uh, I believe that's a good visual representation. And by the way, that is NTSC, but it is Canadian. I know, I know all these. I know there's a lot of Europeans that just utterly hate Americans, and uh, well, you don't you don't give a crap about uh, any of our history there. But uh, well, maybe you should care about Canada, the neutral country there. That's uh, Test Drive Two is a Canadian game. It's still NTSC, so maybe 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 care about them a little bit. Uh, next, I'd like to point you to the Hyperstone Heist, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because nobody uh, watched it. It's my last video. Shame on you. Uh, third, how about uh, my emotional video on uh, Defender of the Crown, dedicated to artist uh, Jim Sex. And lastly, if you want to know what an actual, truly hard game is like, Silpede for DOS. Thanks to everybody uh, tagging along as I do my little uh, thing here. Uh, 
I, I actually uh, I do appreciate you all who listen, and I really do love the Amiga, and it's it's just about the history, guys. Love you all. Goodbye.